Okay, hey guys, um, just uh, getting here set up for the second live stream. Um, if you got any questions, uh, go ahead and uh, let me know. I'm still, still kind of uh, new to this, so doing the best I can. If uh, there's some noises from above, that's my wonderful family. Um, there's one right there. Mm. You gotta love them, don't you? <laughs> um, anyways, um, yeah, so we're here. We're going to do another Fusion live stream. And I was going to continue that uh, strat neck from last time. And I thought, um, you know, I had a couple questions this week about uh, how I do my scarf necks, or my scarf neck joints on the CNC machine. And I thought I'd go over some of that stuff. Um, so we'll look through some of the, the uh, Fusion 360 stuff I did for the ES335 fat neck um, on Monday, uh, the Part three of that, the final part of building that neck is going to be up, so uh, be sure to catch that. Um, part two was really popular, so I'm really happy with it. Um, yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. So uh, um, if you guys have any questions or anything, uh, feel free to, to uh, ask, and uh, I'll see what I can do to answer. But I'm just going to head on over here to Fusion, and uh, we'll start looking at this thing. Okay, so this is it. Um, have a little sip of tea there. Hmm. So yeah, this is the the ES335 fat neck, and this is how I set have it set up. So um, the way I like to do this is I draw my model, and then I like to create this these. Uh, in this case, it's split into a few, a couple of bodies. So I have the next stock here. I have these two next stock pieces. And uh, I just create those and I make them into a clear glass material so you can see through them. And I kind of uh, rough, re roughly draw those and then I create a drawing. Um, you, can go, you can go here and go drawing and from design. I didn't plan on doing this, so if it's as rough, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. So this takes a second, but you can create a, a drawing here um, and this is a little slow. Anyways, what I do is I create a drawing and then I can take that out to the shop, print it out, take it out to the shop and, uh, and uh, then I can use that drawing to, sorry. <laughs> I could use that drawing to uh, to create my neck stock. Um, let me show you this one. I have a piece right here. Switch back over. So I have a piece right here. This is a, a, the next neck that I'm cutting, and I've cut this scarf joint out, and um, I've I've got the uh, cover, the veneer glued onto the top. Um, so from my plan, I don't always end up with stock that's the exact same size, right? So um, like this veneer that adds dimension to this. Um, so I'll go back after I've made the next stock and I'll come and I'll adjust these. So you can just, so if I wanted, so in this case right here, I've got way too much extra material from here to here. So I might just, uh, <clears throat> in order to, you know, have less extra material there, I gotta breathe. <laughs> um, I might just uh, go up here and select this face here, hit Q, and I can move that in like this, like that, and then I have less material there. Um, and if if uh, you know my thickness in this section is not where I thought it was going to be, either up or down, I can do the same thing. I can use Q to move that around. So that's kind of what I do, and and so. Um, the way I do my setups, let's go over here into the cam. Manufacture. So the way I do my setups is I, I really need to have uh, one edge of this stock just dead flat, you know? So I have a really good surface on the top here. I have a really good surface on this other scarf joint. And then I bring this side over to the joiner. So I have a really good surface there. The other ones, I don't really care so much about. Oh, sorry. You're in the wrong screen. Let me show you. Oops. Okay, here. Um, yeah, so I have a really good surface on this that I've done with the machine, and I have a really good surface here that I've uh, thickness sanded out. 
and then you guys probably didn't see that stuff where I was um, doing the let me check see if yeah so you guys probably didn't see any of uh, this stuff here so yeah if I you hit Q and you can just select a face in design sorry so yeah I just modify it using like this um, or like this so yeah and I get that to so that it, this uh, model matches my re at the reality of my piece and that allows me to be really accurate so when I go back into my cam um, you can see I've got a, a several set set setups here and I start out with the setup like this and it kind of hanging over the machine if you want to look if you look back into that uh, the ES335 fat neck first video um, it will uh, oh for some reason that one's been messed up but anyways um, you look at that first one you can see the sequence of events that I go to and I actually walk through a lot of this cam stuff in that video as well So, but I'm going to walk through it again because th there were some questions. So the first thing is to get that stock um, like dead on. So you have a really nice, accurate piece of stock to start with. And then all of my measurements and all of the way I indicate on the CNC bed are all going to be from this one edge, whether it's this side or this side, and essentially from this point or this point. Um, during the flip, I will indicate from actually from this point here, but it has been defined in the previous operation. So let's just walk through them and I'll show you what's going on. So the first thing I do is this is not correct. So let me see if I can correct that. The X axis. I don't know why that's not doing it. Oh, okay, that's fine. Anyways, there's a problem with that, but we won't worry about it. Now, this X axis should be in line with this line here. Um, that's messed up somehow. I'm not sure how, but and it's not important. I've already cut the part, so I'll have to worry about that the next time I go on. <laughs> um, so yeah, I set it up on the machine like this. And I'll have a piece of wood that I've uh, milled on the machine so I know it's square to the machine and I'll butt this flat edge right up against it and then I'll be indicating off of this flat here and off of this corner edge where the scarf joint starts. Well, actually I'm a little ahead of myself there. Before I do any of that I actually have a scarf operation here and it's essentially just this face um, and uh, well I don't know if we're going to talk about that because <laughs> it gets a little bit tricky but um, there's a couple videos that I have out there of cutting the scarf joint um, the way I do it is I just lay it out and cut it by the bandsaw and I use the tape and super glue trick to put it in the machine and then I run this tool path right that's just straight up square with that and uh, then again I'll run that on a piece of MDF that I've set up with some hot glue um, hot glued in some wedges and a piece of MDF to support the neck when I'm running it in this um, it's kind of a support material so this headstock just not floating up there when I'm cutting on the back of it anyways back to the first operation so we're here first thing I do I cut those bores it, it just seems easy to me to cut the bores first a lot of people cut those last I cut them first um, then I'm doing an outline here uh, lots of comments about these whoop de doos here um, on the last time everyone said wasted time wasted space you know uh, all kinds of things like that um, a few people had some really smart comments <laughs> um, so when when you're attacking at these angles the machine has inherent flex right so when you're attacking at these angles you make these smooth contours where it comes in and out of the cut and you get a much more precise cut like that um, a lot of people think you just run this machine and go and slam it to the next corner and slam it to the next corner every time you do that you get a little bit of chatter a little bit of flex um, if you cut really slowly you can avoid it but this is 200 inches per minute that I'm cutting here on this so I kind of need a little bit of room for error I'm also leaving um, 
a 60 thousandths stock to leave on this pass right here. And then I'm coming back here and cleaning it up. It's exactly the same. And these are 30 thousandths cuts um, at a quarter inch deep. So that's how I do, I cut the head, the, the stock. Um, let's just simulate it. I'll show you what it looks like. So the way I do my simulation, I like to use wall paint, make the operation material, and then tail on the toolpath. So, so we'll do the bores. Let's just skip through those. So see how it's kind of disengaging and re-engaging like uh, in a very standard, organized way. And, uh, you know, some people don't like that. Um, I think it worked really, really well. So um, just constant tool engagement is not the goal of CNC in my opinion. You, your opinion may differ and that's totally fine, but yeah, that's totally fine. But, uh, um, anyways, <laughs> um, I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. So yeah, then I'm just 30 thousandths at a quarter inch deep cutting this, this clean up. And then you're kind of left with material that looks like this. And uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to cut this truss rod slot on the top here. Um, so on this neck, because I have this extra heel area, I actually glued in, I used just a piece of MDF that I put some tape and super glue to hold in here in this space so that I could flip the stock around like this. And then I have this truss rod. And so I'm indicating from the exact same point, you see? Um, the peg head is there, the truss rod is there. So same point, you're gonna indicate off of this face, which is up against that milled surface that you put on the CNC bed, and then off this scarf joint again. So, you know, you're dealing with tolerance stack here. So any error in how you indicate off of these is uh, gonna amplify your error and when you start doing curved surfaces, that's where it really shows up. So um, the way I set up this one, it was incredibly accurate. So I'm, I'm really happy with it. I feel like I'm starting to get to the point where I can show you guys what I'm doing because I'm finally kind of confident with it. But Oh, so someone asked um, how I get uh, it to move outside like that. So let's actually look at that. Um, Go back to the peg head here. So um, if you go to the linking, this is where um, it is happening. So if I take this, uh, I'm pretty sure that's where, I, let me make sure. So yeah, so here's my selection of lines. And when you select these lines, it brings them out into a flat because I'm cutting this as if it was 2D, even though it is 3D. So um, this is being messed up because this uh, origin is kind of um, not where it should be right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so where I'm doing, yeah, it's right here in this linking. So if I take these lead in, lead outs, no, actually that's just the entry and the extra exit. So where did I put that? Oh, I've got to fix that origin because that's really causing a trouble. Um, Hey, I'm just trying to get this to work. So it's a live stream, guys. So sorry, it's a little rough, but I'm getting there. So Z axis. Oh, that's why the Z axis was off. The Z axis should be, oops, wrong one. 
should be there. And the x-axis is already on, but I'm just going to do it anyways. Okay. Okay, there we go. Okay. So there's the geometry. Um, let's see if this actually runs. There we go. I could have sworn it was right here that I had that in there, but I'm not. Oh, it might be right here. No. So you can do tangent extension, and that will give you usually from here to here. Um, let's just pull these out just to see what happens. Yep, that's exactly what I expected to have happen. back in I thinking that it's right here where I have keep corner sharp so if I go roll around corner that's probably gonna kill those yeah see where I roll around the corner I'm not sure if you guys can see that very well but um okay I'll bring that fusion window back in where you guys can see it edit okay put it right here okay so now you should be able to see it so where you have this option for roll around corner or keep corner sharp or keep corner sharp with loop so sometimes when you go to keep corner sharp and you have uh, multiple geometry selected like this it'll just give you that funky little loop thing oh it didn't i've got all things all kinds of messed up here now Keep corner sharp, tangent 0.5. I might have to close this down and restart again. This is this is a really good question though, um, Rob Allen. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, this it's a really good question. I I'm I'm not really prepared for it, so it's hard to, you know, hard to do this in a live stream. But let me see if I can get this worked out. Okay, there's it. It was keep corner sharp with loop. Um, I've changed my other, my lead in lead out. So it's keep corner sharp with loop, and then you add the, the lead in lead out. Um, so down here, so these should be at 0 0.5, not 0 0.05. Like that. And that's how you get it. So this is a little bit extra. I, I changed it to one from a half to one, but that's kind of how you do it. So it's just here in, I'll just go over it one more time just to make it sure it's clear. So you go with keep corner sharp with loop. Um, I have it at one here, but it should, probably should be 0.5. And then your lead ins and lead outs also make a difference. And then that should be pretty close. No, that's actually not quite. So it's doing what it was doing on this part, but not on this part. So it, it can be a little bit tricky to work with, but that's how you get those. Um, hopefully that makes some sense. Anyways, yeah, it, it does affect the flex of, I mean, so this is a, uh, to put it in perspective, this is a half inch bit that's three inches long, right? And I use this for, for deep cutting but it's kind of one of, I, I got a whole bunch of these for a really good deal. It's just a straight flute. Um, and you know, that, that seems like a rigid tool. It seems like a nice long rigid tool. There's quite a bit of flex in those. So, um, any tool that's spinning on a router is kind of like a rubber band on a small degree. So steel is quite flexible, even carbide. <laughs> so anyways, let's keep on moving. 
So the trust rod, trust rod uh, setup here, I go to uh, the new orientation, same thing, lining up off this edge and uh, lining up off to this, on this uh, scarf line here. And uh, I'm just doing a, this is my 0.225. This is a Stumac router bit that's made for cutting truss rods for their hot rod truss rods. But I like to use it um, on the other truss rods that are actually a quarter inch thick too, because then I get this kind of like a two parallel line pass. So one pass is full engagement and the other pass is just kind of partial engagement. And then uh, the way I cut this this pocket for the end of the truss rod is, is kind of cool. Um, I'm just using a trace operation and uh, I use that ball end mill, use a trace operation and then I do, what am I doing here? 15 step downs of 0 0.025, so 25,000 step downs, 15 of them just stepping down and it, it actually gives you a really nice clean pocket that looks really good. So um, let's just show you, here's a simulation. So yeah, um, that gives you a pretty nice clean pocket. That's it's actually surprisingly hard to model that shape. <laughs> it's a lot easier to cut it than it is to model it. So I didn't I didn't use any of this geometry. I just used a single line and the trace um, trace tool path for that. Okay, and then after that, I, I want to uh, so okay, we got the trace down. Um, then this guitar neck has this interesting little recess here. This is where the, the one of the humbucker goes. The, the neck humbucker actually fits into this spot. Ooh, my headphones are dying on me. Okay. And uh, so I cut out that area. That's not really interesting or important. Um, and I clean up that face. I, I, again, I always use uh, 60,000 stock to leave and then I do a cleanup pass of either 30 or 60,000. And then this this one is important, right? Because on the next operation, we're going to indicate off of this point, right? Well, I think it's that point, is it? Yeah, no, we're going to indicate off of this point right here. And to do that, we need to have that point, right? The stock is actually probably going to be bigger than this. It's not going to be cut off perfect, perfectly. So I'd run this, this tool path here, and this just cuts me off at exactly where I want to be so that I can indicate from that point on the next one. So that's and that's right where the next one comes up you reorient and reorient the uh, piece in uh, in my bed like this sorry guys it's rough this is only my second live stream so I'm still getting the hang of this but uh, um, I, I like the questions and uh, I appreciate the people watching so thank you guys very much um, so next thing I'm doing and I, I've, I've set up that uh, I, you can't really show it here because I just make it all by hand. My headphones are fancy, dancing around on me again. Okay. So um, I can't really show it here, but if you look in the in the part one video, you can see that uh, piece of uh, sacrificial material that I've run that scallop tool path again on to set up here. So, and I've also, once again, I've got a piece of uh, MDF that I've cut with the CNC machine that matches up with this face. And that allows, what, is that right? Yeah, with this face. So then I can indicate off of this face that I know is true to the machine and off of this point, which is actually this face, and then uh, my Z height. As always, I always set my Z height from the spoil board and then I go up to the Z height. Uh, that's just my preference. I don't dig into my spoil board that way. It's just kind of one of the things I do. Okay. So in this in this operation. So this is all of the back material that we're going to do. So first thing I do is just face off this extra material here because it's going to be a little bit more. Um, once again, you want to adjust your stock material after you've put your stock together so that you can get this to be right. You wouldn't want to be cutting off a half an inch in this cleanup pass, right? Um, then I'm using a pocket operation and I'm actually using to define the area that I want to that I want to cut, I'm actually using this piece of stock material. So once again, another good reason to make sure that your stock in Fusion matches your stock in real life. Um, this is a tenth of an inch step down, quarter of an inch step over, uh, 60,000 stock to leave. And uh, 
I think 200 inches per minute, my standard it's a high rate, 200 inches per minute. Um, then I'm doing the same thing, same setup, um, just using this piece of material for, to, to determine the, the milling area. Um, this, so I do this, this is kind of interesting, but um, so my finish cut, I'm using the three quarter inch ball end mill and that uh, that ball end mill, it can't get right down into the corner, right? So if you want to have a, a clean face that lines up perfectly with where your fretboard is going to be, you need to cut that ahead of time or after. But since I've already got the tool um, set up, for me, it seems easier to cut this at this point. So that's kind of what I do. And then, um, so my ball in mill, <laughs> another problem, they are always trying to work around problems. So my ball in mill, it, it will not cut this deep, right? I don't have a half inch ball in mill that's long. Um, I probably should get something for that, but I don't have it. So um, what I do um, is this contour operation and it, it works surprisingly well, um, and but I leave a little bit of stock to leave. I leave like 10,000 stock to leave. Um, because I am going to have to clean this up by hand and the video for me doing all the cleanup for all of these cuts is is coming up on Monday So definitely check that out. I think it's a really good video um, I was gonna put it as part of the second video, but I thought the content was really good. And I wanted to give it its own space. So um, That's what I did um, Then we're just doing the scallop cleanup here. I I love this scallop toolpath um, you know Uh, Kevin is asking, uh, before I forget to ask, how did you go about learning fusion? <laughs> I'm fairly new and learning the curve, the learning curve is steep. Um, yeah, yes, the learning curve can be steep. Um, I've been using Autodesk since about 1992. So I have a great deal of, uh, background using, um, uh, AutoCAD, um, all the way back into high school for me. And, uh, so... I resisted using Fusion. I was using AutoCAD and well, here, let's, uh, so yeah, I was using AutoCAD for a really, really, really long time. And so once you get used to how AutoCAD works, it's not that hard. My advice is always to everyone who wants to learn Fusion is watch Lars Christiansen's videos. They are awesome. You know, there's so much information in those that uh, you, you just can't beat it. And uh, also NYC CNC. So um, both of those are kind of oriented towards more machining, but that's really what we're doing here. This is machining. You know, it's not uh, it's not luthery <laughs> as much as it is machining. So um, the skills that you need for CAD and CAM um, are going to be strong if you get them from them. Now Fusion, it really works in a very different way than AutoCAD did. So for a long time, for probably about uh, probably like five or six years, um, I was drawing in in AutoCAD, exporting that to MeshCam, and then creating my G code in MeshCam, and then exporting that to Mach three to cut on the machine. And um, it worked pretty good, but when it comes to 3D profiles like this, it was very difficult to work with. Um, so a friend of mine that, um, he suggested Fusion 360 and I thought, oh, I don't really want to learn that. Learning curve is steep, right? <laughs> and I was resistant and I, I, I didn't do it. This, this was like three or four years ago, probably. And, uh, so I resisted it. I did, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And then, um, I was just trying to find, I was looking around for ways to make my processes, um, easier to use. So I tried out Fusion 360 and I started watching those tutorials at that point. And because I have a lot of CAD and CAM background, it was very easy for me to learn. I did not find it to have a hard learning curve. I found the learning curve for Fusion to be very easy. Um, I hear constantly people saying that's not true. That's kind of why I'm trying to share what I do. And I, you know, I'm not as crisp and clean and clear as Lars or, or, uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember what his name is from NYC CNC at the moment. Um, probably somebody knows out there. <laughs> um, but 
Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, definitely the Lars videos are awesome. Um, so, uh, yeah, it wasn't steep for me, but I'm trying to show you how to apply some of the stuff that those guys have done to making guitar necks, which is are kind of the hardest part to make on a CNC machine. And uh, so that this is just what I've learned from them. Um, definitely go up, watch those videos. That's the way to go um, if, if you want to learn this stuff. Okay, so, okay, where were we? Okay, my last operation was just a scallop here on the back. And so let's just do a... So I like to do this, I like to do a lot of these uh, simulations so that I can see what's gonna happen. So here I've selected a whole bunch of stuff and we're just gonna simulate it all out really quick um, just to see what the part looks like through all of those different steps. Oh, we missed one. No, we didn't. Okay, and that's pretty much the part. Yep, we missed the, the truss rod slot there. So anyways, <laughs> kind of a rough one um but uh, yeah i mean uh, i i really like taking that in the direction that helps you guys so like thank you guys very much for the suggestions and uh yeah that was really cool you know it puts me right up on my toes uh <laughs> trying to get that right um so i really appreciate it wrong scene sorry <laughs> i really appreciate it and that's uh pretty much it for this uh live stream um uh, hopefully we'll get better and better at this as time goes by and uh um hopefully you guys learn something from this that's really the the trick you know uh, a, a lot of builders are not really that keen on giving away their secrets i <laughs> i love giving away my secrets i don't know why that is but um i i really like making these videos and if i find out something that works for me um it may not be the standard way to do it, it may not be the definite way to do it but it's a way to do it so <laughs> Thank you guys. If you haven't watched the channel before, definitely like, definitely subscribe. Um, a video coming up on Monday that's going to be really cool. I'm really excited for it. I'm still working on the violin. I've got a, a video that I'm going to get out in the garage right now. Start working on that one. And I'm starting finishing up. Uh, the, the Selmer guitar is almost done. So uh, there'll be another video on that one. And uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, it's awesome that uh, the channel's growing so much, and uh, I really appreciate it. So have a good day, and we will catch you guys next time.